proteins are the the molecules of life. They do all all of the things that are alive. It's proteins that do them, Pro, like enzymes are protein. Uh, all, all, every all the things. There's protein. Proteins what makes us us. Hit me, producer pots. Everybody is talking about eating enough protein. So can you tell us how much do we do really need to eat? Does it matter if it comes from plants or animals or supplements? And how important is it to have protein with every meal and snack? Uh, so I'm going to try to keep track of all the parts of this question. I will re-ask if needed. <laughs> I'm trusting you to make sure that we answer all parts of this question because there, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Okay. Going so let's it. start with how much protein do we need? Like so the, uh, recommended dietary allowance is 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight, which is a really weird way for most people to think about food. Like most of the time it's like you need this many calories or this many grams or uh this many right milligrams of calcium right like we we tend to have like a number that is the number we're shooting for and we tend not to think of it in relationship to us we just think of it in terms of our whatever demographic group we're in so we look at this set of like dietary targets right um, and that being said there's a lot of research supporting higher protein intake than that. So most of the science is somewhere between 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight and 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight. So we can talk about like how to calculate that for yourself of what that translates to in terms of grams of protein. But that's where most of the science is. A lot of those studies are looking at things like weight loss, um, maintenance of lean muscle mass through weight loss. So like keeping keeping the things that keep your basal metabolic rate higher uh, and also reduce risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, a lot of that's looking at exercise performance in athletes, but there are some studies looking at cardiovascular disease risk and protein intake. And I think always when we can talk about health um, outcomes rather than weight outcomes, which don't measure health, um, I think it's much more, that's much more compelling data. So even from a cardiovascular disease risk point, uh, there, there is a really good argument to make for aiming for higher protein intake. So somewhere between 1.2 grams per kilogram body weight to 1.6. Um, so we can think of that as like uh, a range for us to aim for. And then there are situations where even higher protein might be beneficial. If you are an athlete, you might benefit from higher protein. Uh, and if you're actively losing weight, you might benefit from higher than that protein just for the preservation of lean mass. Um, so there are other situations where even even higher uh, protein compared to your size may be beneficial. But 1.2 to 1.6 is really is really a good range. Um, we can pull out the the handy dandy whiteboard and do some sample some sample math um, to, to figure out exactly what that would be. Uh, hey, producer Potts, do you have a, a calculator on your phone? So I, don't have I to do, do the actual math in my head. Okay, yeah. so you start with your weight in pounds. Uh, weight in pounds. Uh, so what? Uh, let's uh, let's say our hypothetical person is let's say 180 pounds. Okay. 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 Um, so first, you're gonna go from that to your weight in kilograms. So to do that, you need to divide by 2.2. So take 180 and divide by 2.2. So 81.81. So uh, this is going to go, this is, is your weight in kilograms. And I think we can just, we can just round. We can just round 81. 81. Okay. okay. So that's your weight in kilograms. Now we're going to take 81 and we're going to multiply by 1.2. So 97.2. So we'll just call that 97. So yep. that's a good lower level of protein. Now we're going to go back and take 81 and we're going to multiply by 1.6. 129. Uh, 129. I mean, really, we could call this 130. 130. Yeah. Um, so I would say for a 180 pound person that aiming between like 100 to 130 grams of protein is a really good place for supporting overall health. So that would be a like a good way to calculate protein if you use a 
tracker like my fitness pal that's what you would put in for your range for your for your target range for the day caveat we don't want our protein intake to be higher than about 30 percent of our total calories so there's four keep your calculator out <laughs> okay. there's four <laughs> calories per gram of protein so let's we'll just round this up to 130 i can actually do this math so 130 times four so 520 calories. Uh, so we don't want that to be more than 30%. So we do uh, 30 over 100 uh, equals 520 over X. So uh, that means 30 X equals 520. Mm -mm. So can you uh, do me a favor and divide 5,200 by three? Divided by three is 1,733. Cool. Uh, so caveat for this 180 pound person, we don't wanna go over 130 calories of protein if our diet, if our, if our calorie goals of the day are under about 1,700 calories. So that is, that is the the caveat now i would argue that a 180 pound person there's probably not a lot of situations where 1700 calories is a great acceptable calorie amount goal. right I'll almost certainly want to be at at least 2000 2200 i would think uh but that is a question for your doctor or a registered dietitian or a certified <laughs> nutritionist not a question for the whiteboard um, but that is how we calculate our, our protein. So we just want to make sure that when we hit this high level of protein goals, again, that it's not about, it's not higher than 30% of our okay. calories. Um, and All right. So that is when our protein gets higher than about 30%, it's pretty hard on our kidneys. It starts to increase risk of some health problems. That's no longer balanced macronutrients. So that's okay. how we calculate how much protein. That's where, where science is at. Good what was know. the next part of the question? Okay, does it matter if it comes from plants, animals, or supplements? Uh, no, with the caveat of as long as it's coming from multiple sources. So um, all, almost all animal proteins are complete proteins, which means they have good amounts of all nine of the essential amino acids. Uh, the only incomplete like animal protein that I can think of is collagen. So collagen is an incomplete protein. Uh, bone broth probably should count as an incomplete protein. There's a, there's a little bit more tryptophan in bone broth than there is in collagen uh, or gelatin, but it's, it's not really enough to be made. And you've covered collagen in depth in another video, so I will make sure to link that here for everyone. Thanks, Producer Potts. <laughs> um, so uh, that's the only animal protein that's not a complete protein, but it only matters if like collagen is your only protein source, right? You're, you're going to get tryptophan from other things if you're getting protein from other things. And the same with plant proteins. There's very few complete plant proteins. And every time I try to make the list, I reveal like how this doesn't stick in my head. Uh, but it's like <laughs> hemp soy products and hemp seeds and um, a bunch of others. <laughs> every time, every time I have to like name the complete plant proteins, I'm like, they, they don't stick in my brain. I don't know why. I don't know why numbers stick in my brain. Freaking ugh, plant proteins don't. Um, I, I guess because I'm an omnivore. Uh, so, um, and also because complete plant proteins, it really, again, it doesn't matter. So um, you don't need to be getting all nine essential amino acids from the same meal, but also as, as long as you're, you're getting protein from a diversity of sources, you're going to be balancing out uh, whatever proteins are, are missing, right? Lysine and methionine in, in terms of, of plant proteins. So do you mean like a variety of plant proteins? If yes. someone doesn't eat meat, that's okay as long as they're getting a variety yeah. of plant proteins. So if that's why like- just, Yeah, okay. So as long as you're getting some grains and some legumes, basically. Gotcha. You're gonna be, you're gonna be fine um, because gotcha. they tend to, to complement each other. That's why like rice and beans is like the classic plant protein combo. Gotcha. Uh, so uh, that means it's the same for uh, protein supplements, right? Whether that's whey protein powder or pea protein powder, soy protein isolate, egg white protein powder, um, 
all, all of the, I mean, collagen too, right? So yeah. um, some of them are complete proteins and some of them aren't, depends on which one we're talking about. But as long as it's not your main source of protein, uh, or your okay. only source of protein, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's complete or not. Um, there's some cool, like there are some studies showing that whey protein can support muscle protein synthesis a little bit higher level than some other proteins, but it's a very small effect. Generally, you're not going to worry about that unless you are an elite athlete, right? There's some interesting studies showing that like some collagen peptides can increase collagen production, not because of supplying the resources, but because of some signaling from like this really cool dipeptide that collagen peptides can have that's proline and hydroxypoline mixed. Again, that's a, it's a really small effect because you're going to stimulate collagen production from, again, exercising, having enough vitamin C, right? So all of those like little details, most of the time, most of us, we don't need to worry about it. So just getting enough protein from a few different, at least a few different sources. Um, and then it used to be thought of that we basically only used up to 45 grams of protein in a meal for like muscle protein synthesis. Um, that has been recently shown to not be the case that the threshold's probably quite a lot higher than that, at which point we no longer really utilize that protein for muscle, but we can still, still use that protein for other things. Um, we, I mean, Proteins are the the molecules of life. They do all all of the things that are alive. It's proteins that do them, Pro, like enzymes <laughs> are protein. Uh, all, all, every all the things. There's protein proteins what makes us us. Um, so it's not just our muscles. It's in all of our cells. Gotcha. So and here's uh, the third question. Yeah. So, do we have to have protein with every single meal and snack? No. Um, so I because you can utilize a lot more. So like, let's, let's take this 180 pound person example from the, the handy dandy whiteboard. And let's just round to like hundred grams of protein as a goal. You can, you can definitely use, like if you had two meals a day, you can definitely use 50 grams of protein from a meal for sure. Um, okay. so if you want to just have two meals a day, if you, this, this 180 pound person wanted to intermittent fast, we know I have complicated feelings under intermittent fasting, but like, let's say <laughs> that's another video. Loves it. Let's say this person loves it. Uh, that's great for this person. Happy for them. Uh, go forth and we'll eat protein. Um, so, uh, so if this person was just eating two meals a day and they wanted 50 grams of protein at each of those meals or 40 grams at one meal and 60 grams at the other, that would be totally fine. That would, that would not make a difference in terms of the, you know, benefits and utilization of that protein. I can't eat 50 grams of protein at a meal. Like that's not compatible. Uh, so with... Basically do whatever works for you, yeah. spread it out. So or... I really need three meals a day to eat, to get my protein. Like I, that's, yeah. I, I really need that. Um, it's a lot, e I also aim for a for hundred grams a day. It's a lot easier for me to get 30 to 35 grams at a meal than it is for me to get 50. 50 is, 50 is a lot. Like that's, uh, like eight ounces of meat. That's yeah. That's uh, eight or nine, ten, depending on uh, like a, that's a lot for me. Um, and then plant proteins. That's even because that's packaged with fiber. I feel like that can be even more filling depending on what we're right. talking about. So, yeah. um, so yes. So it doesn't really it doesn't really matter, and you don't need to get it at every meal. So, um. Uh, this is fascinating that you asked me this question because I actually uh, filmed a video in the woods this morning where I talked about this and we did not know that we were going to have this conversation. <laughs> um, but, um, but you know, for all nutrients, protein, fiber, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, uh, we don't need, to, like averaging over the week is fine. Gotcha. Maybe, maybe three days. We don't need to have uh, every meal be a balanced meal. We don't need every day to be a balanced day. We just need to average it over a fairly short period of time. So like, depending on the nutrient we're talking about, we want to either average at like the three day-ish day level. So something like a water soluble nutrient like vitamin C, vi B vitamins. We want to be hitting uh, the daily value on average over a fairly short period of time. Uh, same for something like protein or fiber where we really are like, you, like 
that fiber is feeding those gut bacteria. We want to be averaging it over a fairly short period of time. Um, and then other things where we can store uh, a fair amount like vitamin A, vitamin uh, D, then we can average that over a longer period of time. So say like a week. So as long as we're hitting the daily value on average over the week, then we're fine. So it, we really don't need to be like every meal needs to be perfectly balanced. If you want to have one meal that's just fruit, like that's fine. Um, as, as long as the overall diet, again, averaged over a few days is a, you know, balanced nutrient replete diet, right? A diet that's going to supply all of the nutrients that our bodies need. So that absolute, that goes not just for protein, that goes for all of our nutrients that gotcha. we don't need to have it all at one meal. There are some, um, potential metabolic benefits to having protein at breakfast. So uh, having more protein at breakfast can help to improve blood sugar regulation. So that could be important for some people. And there are some benefits to our appetite from having protein at each meal and having protein with our snacks. So it can help to regulate our appetites. So we're not like hungrier than uh makes sense for our body right like our hunger is is more proportional to what we actually need when we have basically protein fiber and fat at every meal that's kind of like the optimal situation for regulating metabolism and uh hunger so there is some benefit to having protein if you're going to have a snack with your snack and at each meal but it's by no means a necessity right that's making things like uh my you more know. difficult than they need to be <laughs> yeah so like if you if you um there's lots of there's lots of it's not it's not just skipping breakfast or having a low protein breakfast that can make it harder to control what we eat later right like also how long it is until we eat again how much sleep we got how active we are there's a lot of things that are impacting hunger and blood sugar regulation and cravings but it can help all of those things to have protein, a little bit of protein every time we eat. Uh, but it is by no means a necessity and we still benefit from getting enough protein, even if our protein is kind of not, it's a little bit more chaotic throughout the day of, of what gotcha. So if someone really wants to nerd out about all the different amino acids and really dive in and learn more about protein, is there a place they can do that? I would say start at Nutribor.com, uh, go to the nutrients icon and then go to proteins and amino acids. Then you can learn about how much protein we need, all this jazz about complete proteins. And then you can start learning about uh, amino acids. I have detailed articles on all of the essential amino acids. You can learn about what they do in the body, how they're utilized differently, um, and actually how much we need of the different uh, essential amino acids because they're the only ones that have uh, amount like ranges set. Uh, all of the non-essential ones don't. Uh, so I would say that is a, a great place to start learning about protein and amino acids. And it's also one of the nutrients that I cover in my book, Nutribor. If you don't want to get too nitty gritty into all of the different utilizations for different amino acids, I would rather just big picture stuff on uh, how to get enough protein and how much protein different foods have. I love that. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah. Thank you.